Good day, brothers and sisters. Another wonderful day to be on this earth and in this studio, Glenn Zone with Alex and Glenn at Alex Sass Show. For sure, by now, you already click subscribe, like, and all the bells and whistles. And if you didn't, I remind you out of kindness to do so because we are shadow band. And also, I know where you live. If you don't press it, I come to your house in the middle of the night and I press it for you. No, I won't do that. <laughs> That's criminal. You know what else is criminal? The Tucker Carlson story, but not the way you think. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, it's a good news for us. And this is a, a very big announcement for Alex Sass show. The reason why Tucker Carlson left the Fox News because he's joining our network. Woohoo! Wouldn't be something. <laughs> but, you know, keep wishing. Everything starts with a thought. Uh, manifestation. So we are manifesting Tucker Carlson to work at the Glen Zone. Alex, no, he'll have his own. He'll have a Tucker Carlson show uh, for sure. He has his own brand, but on our network. And uh, that's wishful thinking. And it may happen. It may happen. I don't know, Glenn. Did you hear? What What is your view on Tucker Carlson's story? Well, we have our own point of view. And we're going to uh, bring it up quite a few times. Also, uh, there's a lot of news that's happening. It's coming out more and more. So what we did... We, is we decided today that we're going to be having three shows a week starting next week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, to try and keep the hour show, because we could go on for hours, so we'll just shorten down the time. Now, with regards to The View, that's uh, their point of view, and I just want to give a little heads up to the viewers. Be prepared, because you might be thinking you're watching a cross between Jabba the Hutt and Raggedy Andy. Yeah, that's not Star Wars. We're not showing you Star Wars. It is the view. It's not our view, but it's interesting to see what people are celebrating across the table. Word has just come down that Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have agreed to part ways. Well, thank you for your service to the network and host of the prior contributor. Wave. <laughs> Did they, did they just do the wave? <laughs> Come on, folks. Na, 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 who is that? I have no I have no idea who those people are. Glad. I, I I know just uh Whoopi Goldberg because of Star Trek and other shows. He is responsible for the degradation that we see somewhat of our democracy in this country. And I just think as a faithful person, look at God. Look at God. Well, in you know, Russian propaganda, hardest hit. Yeah, I mean, he's been the biggest yeah. purveyor of pro-Russian coffee. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a good day for the Ukrainians. Karma, karma Bringing God yeah. on the view. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> this, yeah, there's two things, Glenn. Bringing God on the view, and if Tucker Carlson is the is the Russian propagandist, what does it make you and me okay? Well, I am the Russian propagandist. I'm the Russian bot officially, but I'm not Russian bot propagandist by default. Uh, I just like to discuss. The other view. <laughs> no pun intended. Well, let's face it. This view here on television, you know, that that's just uh, an agenda to indoctrinate a lot of the women viewers because they'll they'll watch that. That's uh, a lot of soap opera and stuff. So, well, the unequivocally, uh, unequivocally uh, the, there has been a lot of reaction from the so-called uh, left or neoliberal left that. Uh, you know, they uh, they are truly celebrating, like they feel like it's a punishment for Tucker Carlson. It was this such an evil person inciting, well, obviously in this in this segment, they accused him of being the Russian spy, Russian butt, the Russian propagandist. It's, it's odd that actually, uh, you know, he worked on Fox and Fox often called for kind of similar warmongering stories. And we'll get to those kind of stories in a minute, but there's more to it. Uh, you know, you know that you guys know this lady. Uh, she is um, what do they call her? AOC. That's her nickname, right, Glenn? Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Nice looking girl, but some of the stuff that comes out of her trap. Ooh. Okay, let's 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 listen to her view and her opinion on what she's saying what Tucker Carlson and some of these other folks on Fox do, it is very, very clearly incitement of violence, very clearly incitement of violence. And that is the line that I think we have to uh, be willing to contend with. She has Trudeau's eyes. <laughs> the deer in a headlight look. 
Well, she wants to be. Uh, she's she basically. She said what you say all the time. She said, "Be we we careful, right?" Is that what she said? Uh, because like he's so violent. He's inside. He's basically the. He's inciting the civil population. You know, the citizens of uh, free thinking citizens of United States. He's inciting them into violence. How dare he? By in, you know how he does it. He does it by presenting facts. Well, at least facts that are available to him. And from what I know, he does a lot of research into the subject. Um, but it's reach coming from that side of the story, Glenn, isn't it? Not so long ago, we had some kind of not so violent prote protests when uh, America was burning during the COVID times. And those protests were not super spreaders <laughs> of the so-called COVID-19 virus. They were super spreaders of the... Uh, um, what would, what were they spreading? Peace and love by burning and looting, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's their form of spreading change, you know. Not not what we did in 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 Canada here during the truckers' protest. We want to change our government, but we're we're not physically aggressive, and we're we're not out to try and break the law. That that was ridiculous. Uh, the ridiculous part is, those are the people who accuse Tucker and spreading violence. That's the people that constantly accused uh, uh, Trump and J6 trials or so-called trials and everything else, January 6th things, uh, that uh, people like Trump and Tucker, they're the ones who, they are so dangerous and they're causing, you know, causing people to go on the streets. I, I'm just going to play a clip. This is nothing new. You guys have seen it before. And if you haven't, those are the actual people who incite violence. Starts with Nancy Pelosi, you later. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. You know, there needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. Enemies of the state. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. Do something about your dad's immigration practices, you feckless When they go low, we kick them. How do you resist the temptation to run up and wring her neck? Biggest terror threat in this country is... White. Glenn. Most of them radicalized right up to the right. I thought he should have punched him in the face. I said, even if you lost, he insulted your wife. Yes. He came down the escalator and called Mexicans rapists and murders. He said, well, what do you think I should have done? I said, I think you should have punched him in the face and then gotten out of the race. And you would have well, been a hero. I'd like to punch him in the face. I said, if we were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of them. Punch some people in the face! When was the last time an actor... Did he finish high school? <laughs> They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. And that's a fact. Look as his character is stabbed to death. Where is John Wilkes Booth when you need him? That's it right there. Pull it up. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. She's Missouri blown quite a few things. <laughs> investigation by the Secret Service after saying she hopes President Trump is assassinated. I will go and take Trump out tonight. And if you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system. Domestic enemy, Glenn, domestic enemies. Are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. They're not going to stop before Election Day in November, and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be, everyone should take note of that on both levels. That this isn't, they're not going to let up, and they should not. Who is that? Oh, man. Yeah, I remember this. Strange, I though. Eh? Uh, uh, about half of those people that we just watched, you don't hear of them anymore. They've just dissipated, gone, dried up, evaporated. Ayanara, see ya. Well, and maybe even if they are still somehow involved in the mix, they are no longer the focus point. And, you know, this is interesting that you brought this up because... Uh, those are professional agitators. Those are professional divide and conquer agents. And again, if you're watching this show, we're not here to make you hate your fellow Democrats, brothers and sisters, or your f fellow They're liberals. not Democrats, champion. They're globalists hiding under the left. 
like the extreme left, but they're globalists. They're paid provocateurs, okay? But, but what is the definition of a globalist nowadays? Uh, well, they don't work for the people in the country. They've been paid and put there to do the globalist work of uh, extracting money from the masses, um, diverting the attention from the masses to what's really going on. So it, the shell game that we talk about all the time, nothing to see over here. Meanwhile, look over there because that's big news. Oh, speaking of big news, <laughs> Fox News. Fox News, right? Who owns the Fox News? Look, the Vanguard Group. That's the highest uh, stake owner. And uh, three more down is the BlackRock. And who's the, I think, uh, Kla Klaus Schwab is the shareholder of Vanguard Group, isn't he? Yeah, and uh, Mr. Fink is uh, the boss of uh, BlackRock. Now, these guys have their hands in all kinds of globalist agendas everywhere. So when we talk about uh, globalist agendas and what a globalism is, it's really is not really about uh, spreading uh, the Star Trek utopia story and like, oh, let's live all in the Renaissance happily ever after is, you know, one, one earth, one people. They're still dividing us by countries. It's just, you know, under, uh, you know, under the uh, uh, disguise of, okay, let's, we live on the same earth. Let's share the resources, but there's no sharing. You know, they just want it all for themselves and you get nothing and you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still getting over the picture of a whoopee iceberg. <laughs> Yeah, some, some, something really terrible happened to her. Speaking of globalists, and one of the uh, one of the theories that I have why um, <laughs> why Tucker's no longer with us on Fox News, beside all those things that we just mentioned about, there was actually these other stories. But I mean, we're gonna stay on the comical on the comical uh, end of it. Uh, remember that happened a few months ago. Maybe it was last year when uh, Tucker Carlson actually called for liberating Canada. Let's watch this. Years, the United States has, as a matter of official policy, opposed dictatorships around the world. But what if tyranny arrived right next door? What would that look like? And Trudeau what would our government. government do in response? Would we liberate the people living under authoritarian Yes, please, now. <laughs> that is the topic of Hurry our up. upcoming Tucker Hurry Carlson up. Originals documentary, O Canada. Here's a first look at what we found. The cost of freedom is always high. John F. Kennedy. But Americans have always paid it. Some nations may be able to turn a blind eye to atrocities in other countries. Don't listen to him. The United States of America is different. Fortunately for the oppressed. Definitely don't listen to him. America's influence is considerable. Roger, talking about my Islam. Oh, um, mankind. Uh, we, we like to say people kind. Exactly. <laughs> All right. The police then, then moved in and arrested me. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> in the entire time that I was in prison. <laughs> they shot me point blank. <laughs> my mouth, my nose. Is that the reason, Glenn? Is that the reason why Tucker Carlson is no longer that... Uh, Justin had some kind of influence over his uh, removal. <laughs> Is that it? big guy? Let's keep it real. That would be more of a fantasy. I mean, to come up here and change things around, uh, help us out. But uh, no, I, I think he's going to move on to other things. Like we, we just pointed out, um, Fox News was number one for mainstream media people viewership in America. But now we know who owns it. So that's supposed to be more of a left-leaning, you know, uh, mainstream media. But that left-leaning, or sorry, right-leaning, but left-leaning, right-leaning, that's just uh, bad wings to the same bird, okay? That's just to put people against each other, to divide your country. It's a, it's a belief system. Divided, we stay weak. United, we're strong. If we were all united and working together, the government would be would be held accountable by the people. We would tell them what to do. And then you wouldn't have all these problems. You wouldn't have wars around the world. Citizens of every country do not want wars. It's the warmongers that want wars. 
so do you think he honestly had a change of heart like that's uh there there's some stories to back it up he recently did a podcast uh where he explained that he really felt that he was actually part of the problem for many many years just listen for a few minutes control apparatus like there's no yeah i know i know because you're younger and smarter and you're like yeah yeah but what if you're me and you spent your whole life in that world and to look around and all of a sudden you're like oh wow not only are they part of the problem but i spent most of my life being part of the problem defending the iraq war like i actually did that you, you got paid that? for it too well, what do you think what is one of your biggest regrets in your career oh, defending the iraq war that is it well i've had a million regrets not being more skeptical calling people names when i should have listened to what they were saying look when you when someone makes a claim there's only one question that's important at the very beginning which is is the claim true or not mm. so i say you know you committed murder or you rigged the last election before you attack me as a crazy person for saying that maybe you should explain whether you did it or not <laughs> you right. know what I mean? well the reason i believe he, he brings up a very good point a lot of people have a hard time listening to another side because they are too much emotionally attached to their own world the philosophy that they live in so if you introduce a, it's something else to their life it changes their whole paradigm and it's scary the change is scary, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's natural for a person to resist change. Um, it, it it also it's easier to to um, convince people. No, sorry, I, I'm I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is easy to convince people if if it is an emotional thing. That's how like. 9-11, for example, and this is a segue to one of his regrets. What he was talking about is regretting uh, defending the Iraq war. Why was it easier to convince Americans and the rest of the Western world to go into Iraq? They used something, they used an event, which was very emotional to the Americans and Canadians and everybody in the Western culture, which was 9-11. I was think I was saying going to say before it's like Mark Twain said it's easier to fool people than to convince them that they've been fooled cuz then their ego gets into into the way and then they resist the change you see so this is the reason why at least Tucker he says okay you know we we're all growing in life and we're allowed to change our point of view and our opinions when we're given more input to, to adjust how we see things. There's nothing wrong with that. At least he comes out and says it. But there are some people who have too much fake pride because they're run by their ego, and they they won't even say it or, or acknowledge it. They prefer just to say, no, that's my character. That's the way I am. That's the way I've always been. For example, here you have people in Canada who will keep voting liberal, no matter who's there, because they said, oh, well, I've always voted liberal, so I'm going to do the same thing. Ridiculous. That's a democracy? No, that's programming, and yeah. we talked about this in our last show. If you haven't did, if you haven't watched Predictive Programming episode, please do. It's only available on YouTube and Rumble. We haven't actually posted it on the any audio uh, podcast sites, so you can only. It's a very visual uh, ten minute episode. Please do watch it. It's really interesting. But here's the video that uh, Tucker is referring to. Actually, the time in his life where he felt emotionally attached to defending the United States because, you know, he's a patriot. He is. No, no doubt No doubt in my mind he's a patriot. Let's watch this episode. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, good to see you after uh, we met briefly at the event in 2008 in Minneapolis for Ron Paul. Oh, that was fun. I remember yeah. that. But you, but you had to leave early. What happened? Uh-oh, you got me. How, did the you, truth why did, why did, the you, why did you stopping. bail on Ron Paul? Paul? I'll tell you why. The truth is stuff. Paul, it's when Jesse Ventura got up and started saying 9-11 was an inside job. He didn't say that. Yeah, yeah he did say that. No, he said that it was uh, curious why the FBI, come on, come on. Uh, you know, had been lauding on on on. Uh, Look, I'm the, I'm on the, the low, I, I got it. I was there. And uh, but gotcha. so you had to leave because that one. I was enraged. I was enraged by it. it wasn't controversial. So you were, you were, you were, you were so personally let me, enraged. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me answer your question. Sure. It wasn't controversial. It was stupid. And if there's any evidence that the government... See, that's an emotional response. You know, I believe anything if there's evidence, but there isn't evidence. So knock it off. That's Enraged. Okay, I had to leave. Day. Sure, sure. But one stupid person says something stupid at a Ron Paul event. Yeah, you're, you're I, I, I hate that. And, and by the way, 
I am open to almost any crackpot theory about anything. It's just on that subject, come on. You know what I mean? That's too much. That Even for me. So just out of curiosity then, what, what's your take on Building 7? Which explanation do you believe? Come on. <laughs> this is like no, that's a serious question. Which explanation did, did it is? A, it is a serious question. There's two explanations. It was either it was uh, it was pulled or it was isolated pockets of fire in the building that blew that, that were sort of uh, let me, side let me get, let me, the, the two towers coming down that right. brought it down. This is a no-win conversation, so I'm not going to continue it. But yeah, you can't win it. That's for sure. <laughs> Is the obvious one, which is the buildings came down because a bunch of nutcases flew a plane in there. Okay. But Most people uh, only know that two buildings went down, by the way, right? Yeah, but and also the, he didn't answer the building seven question. Now, is this the is this the time in his life that he regrets that he's like he heavily defended? Did he have to have this position because of his affiliation with Fox News? Fox Fox News at the time, or is that? Uh, is that really is uh, his personal belief? You know, it's really hard to tell, but this is definitely the point that he regrets that he was mentioned in an interview previously. But like, see, that's how you catch people too with this whole 9 11 nonsense is like, well, what happened to Building 7? <laughs> you know, nobody can answer that. They did I actually, rem I remember watching it live, they'll say, oh, we had to pull it. Well, that's a term for controlled demolition, but also like, they, no debris hit it from. You know the the first two buildings that collapsed, and uh, we I can pull it up right now. I'm not even going to. This is ridiculous. You can pull up million, not millions, but hundreds of videos from YouTube of uh, skyscrapers, high rises burning for hours, sometimes for days, and not collapsing. <laughs> and then uh, something that has uh, been structurally built to withstand. And by the way, remember that during World War Two. Uh, the B-52, I believe, or B-17, hit the one of the uh, hit the buildings. I don't know if it was the uh, hit the Empire State build Empire State, and that didn't fall down. And that's much older building. Anyway, uh, we can beat that horse, and we can have this whole. We can talk for weeks about 9/11 and everything else. We have a show that we did with uh, Melanie Renault uh, on Tartaria and mud floods, and we talk about that a little bit. So. You can check that in our podcast series. But Glenn, is this... Oftentimes you hear about people, they don't change. Like, it's it's hard. But I think people do change if they want to. Yeah, it's a it, mindset. It's obviously he changed for the better. But also this change, like you, got, you just got exposed there in this little video we went through. But this this change also made him a very wealthy man. Because he was able to capitalize on a lot of the uh, way a lot of people were thinking. So a lot of people would follow him religiously. And that's the, uh, that's the problem you get into. It's like, oh, I, they, they have faith in one person and they'll do or they'll believe everything that one person says all the time. And they'll lose the, the, uh, the ability to make the decisions for themselves. In other words, they're just a consummate follower. The world doesn't need, need more followers. The world needs leaders, people who think for themselves and good leaders so we can take out more of these so-called bad leaders in the world that are causing like the wars and are, are ripping the, um, the people off of their money through uh, excessive taxes. You know, it goes on and on. The corruption at the higher level, is it's been going on for so long, but it is being found out and people have had enough, which hence you see all the protesting going on in different countries of the world. Well, in other words, what you're saying is uh, to use the power of discernment to actually engage into critical thinking, it's not enough to watch one source, to not enough to receive information from one source. As a matter of fact, don't receive information from similar sources either. Like if you're watching CNN, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, whatever, Whatever those uh, 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 you know letter soup uh, are, just observe completely opposite you know uh, points of view to receive information because you will be able to discern once you receive completely polar opposite. You'll some of that will sound ridiculous to you based on the factual data presented, and 
you know, it's maybe not just American sources. Listen to some European, Asian, Middle Eastern, African, Eastern European, I don't know, Martian <laughs> AI. <laughs> Listen to the all opinions and then uh, uh, those are the opinions specifically. And somewhere among those opinions, you may sneak a fact to hear <laughs> fact or two, right? So one of the things that's going on that people now talking about is this uh, lawsuit, Glenn. What, what's, what's up with that lawsuit? Well, you see, there's a lot of people speculating what happened with Tucker Carlson. It's go the, the same thing we're going to be uh, doing here on uh, Don, uh, Don the Lemon from yes. CNN. Don the yes. Lemon from CNN. Well, he got squeezed out of CNN. So, so the, the, the speculation is, is running rampant. And a whole bunch of stories are going to come up. But one thing that's for sure, Tucker Carlson is worth quite a lot of money now. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so when a person like that who's controversial is worth a lot of money, now that's a target. Okay? And that's a target for a lawsuit. Just ask Trump, for example. He's the most outspoken man in, 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 in well, probably in the whole world. But he gets up every day. And he goes against it. You know, he has so much opposition against him. And the man keeps going. There's something different about this man. You may not like the things he does all the time or his mannerism or, you know, his billionaire attitude that seems to upset a lot of people. But you have to respect that the man has a certain stamina and a resistance to keep going no matter what. This is not a young man, you know, but he he leads like he's 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 a king, doesn't stop. Well, speaking of this, uh, uh, the story is uh, uh, there, there's a, a woman who's uh, you know she worked underneath him to prepare for his shows and everything, and she's she's suing him because she says it was an unbearable work environment. Uh, she she was completely offended and it was too aggressive and it caused a lot of stress on her and that well that's what the job entails okay it it's it's up to date it's here and now and you got to be prepared and you got to be ready to go on a, on a split second notice and that's part of the job. <laughs> here's here here's her point. <laughs> uh, that's how this is comedy. Okay, so Mrs. Grossberg said in the lawsuit naming Mr. Carlson that male producers regularly used vulgarities to describe women and frequently made anti-Semitic jokes. Well, Grossberg, anti-Semitic, I get it. Um, on her first day working for Mr. Carlson, Mrs. Grossberg said she discovered the office was decorated with large doctored pictures of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi wearing a, a plunging swim, uh, swimsuit. She said she was once called into the top producer's office to be asked whether Mrs. Uh, Bartiromo was having a sexual relationship with the House Republican le uh, leader, Kevin McCarthy. So it's, I guess it's back to the same old, same old, uh, you know. Sexual. She wants to sue, to sue for that, like, because she felt uncomfortable. Who cares? Like, it, you know, that's, that's petty stuff like what do you think that's worth going after somebody what a million dollars it's ridiculous come on do you, do you, what do you think happened to don lemon along well, the line? something about the same thing you see all the speculation is well, what happened to him oh it's because he was talking about this that you know uh, women and uh, you know because i think uh, mr lemon he he's a uh, gay right I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure how would you be pretty sure there, big guy? I think he was openly, I think he was open about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, is he married to a gay? I, that's not the details I'm even interested about. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. Good answer. <laughs> that, that was pretty good. <laughs> I, there, I'm trying to find his uh, Twitter post. Uh, he did, uh, he did left the Twitter saying like, um, I wish I can find it right well, now. Well, you, you see, there, there's, uh, Don Lemon is out, Tucker Carlson is out, and these were opposing uh, mainstream media. But even the the CEO of uh, NBC Universal, uh, Mr. Shell, he just stepped down because of uh, inappropriate behavior at work. 
So you see, a lot of the big wigs are uh, changing places or, uh, you know, ducking and weaving to just and, and want to get out. Like, OK, I'm, I'm gone. I got found out. I'm history. So we'll see in the future what happens with uh, Mr. Lemon. I could see uh, Tucker Carlson getting involved in politics because he, he would have a pretty big following. Now, in politics, of course, he would have to put a filter on uh, a filter that maybe he could show Mr. Trump how to use uh, efficiently for the betterment for trying to get more voters. But that's the point. Maybe we don't need a filter anymore. But I don't know. It's uh, that, That's a, like this whole thing with like I, with your intention. What do your words actually mean? Like what, what is the purpose of you speaking? What stands behind this? Are, are you just uh, some empty gesture filling up the gaps? Or are you actually uh, trying to get something done for the betterment of the people? And the intent is very important behind it. You know, in today's modern society, how you deliver the message is just as important as the message itself these days. Okay, so here's Don Lemon's message after he got fired. After 17 years at CNN, I would have thought that someone meant it. Okay. Someone would, uh, in management would have had the decency to tell me directly. At no time was I ever given any indication that I would not be able to continue to do the work I have loved at the network. It is clear that there are some larger issues at play. With that said, I want to... Whatever, I don't know the rest of the message. Say, say goodnight. <laughs> so what he's actually doing... You know, he. I, if you ever watch his shows, I don't know if you did, but it, I'm, I'm sure you watch bits, bits and pieces of whatever he was talking about. Uh, he would always challenge anything alternative, any kind of alternative message, and uh, accuse everybody of being a conspiracist, a conspiracy theorist, because that's a very derogatory thing to do and to be. Uh, and here in his message, he says, "It's clearly there are some larger issues at play." Is he being? Is he being a conspirator? <laughs> what is going on, Glenn? I don't know, but uh, it, like I said before, when you were showing about all the uh, the people on the left there who were inciting hatred and violence, and it's that, it was one of them. Yeah, and it's fun. They're all losing their jobs. That are all going away. Like you don't see much of them anymore. Not Whoopi Goldberg. She's not losing anything, especially the weight. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that was a right hook, champ. But um. You know, I don't think, obviously, uh, Whippy Goldberg has the same pull on on the populace as, let's say, a, a Tucker Carlson or a Don DeLemon. She, she has her place in an equation, though. Uh, so there's a, CNN did have a response. Uh, CNN Communications Twitter. Don Lemon's statement about this morning's events is inaccurate. He was offered an opportunity to meet with management, but instead released a statement on Twitter. He was stating, basically, he said in his previous statement that he did not even know he was being fired. And that was uh, his agent delivered the news. Uh, how convenient. All right. Who cares really about Don Lemon? Let's, uh, I'm, I'm glad he's gone. And, uh, well, on the other hand, they had an interesting question. Like, does he have a family? Like, you would, in this case, you would normally say, oh, it's too bad. I, I hope his family is okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but now you're like asking questions. Bro, that, that. That's a modern family. It's <laughs> the modern right? family. The, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, for, for them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cracking you up, my big guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, poor them. Yeah. That's that's definitely, this. if he uses pronouns, it's probably that now. Or they then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so he definitely is gone, and as a result, like this is how I know all those uh, those uh, news networks. They're not in the business of making money. Well, they are in the business of making money, but not the way you think. Uh, if they were, they wouldn't make such poor decisions because he had a number one show. Well, he was flipping between two shows: that show and the other show. I forgot the the five or whatever. Uh, so he had like, I don't know, every night, like three and a half million followers on his eight o'clock program. And he definitely brought in a lot of the uh, advertisement revenue. So why are you going to go ahead and shoot yourself on the food by firing him? So it, it does, it, that's not a, it's, it's like a, uh, what's that beer thing? <laughs> Oh, you know, the like Bud Light. The Bud Light. It's like a Bud Light decision. Like, let's, let's shoot it. Like, this is the greatest thing since sliced cheese on that network. 
let's fire it. All like right. unless again, unless there's something more to the story. And again, we're speculating, and this is a part of the entertainment. And I hope you're being entertained because you know we do categorize a com a show as a comedy because we're definitely apolitical, right? Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's the news, but the news is all negative. So we just put like a happier spin on it to get you people to laugh about the realities of things that are going on. That's the only way. <laughs> when when Tucker announced that he left, the shares of Fox. It went down uh, fi over 5% in one day. In other words, they were uh, wiped off over half a billion dollars of market cap. That's nothing to sneeze at, Glad, <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe you can if you have COVID. Uh, I, but, and, and even Fox, like, I know Trump was on Fox News many times. But when Trump says it's fake news, a lot of part, uh, parts of Fox are also fake news too, you know. Oh, for sure. And that's exactly what Tucker Carlson said. That's what he regrets. He defended uh, different things like Iraq war and all that stuff. They were uh, the propaganda outlet for the masses and they still are. And it's still that divide and conquer tool, right? You know, the, the, the sports is the thing that used to be a divide and conquer tool, but it doesn't work as well, you know, because the, the, the infused sports with uh, basketball and if you i don't know if you listen to the phil jackson's interview he even said he'd stop watching basketball because it's so politically infused now it took all the fun out of the game yeah it's the same thing with a a friend of mine that i know he won't watch boxing anymore because he says it's like the wrestling it's all engineered it's all fake it's all about money people taking dives just to, or or making the fights very very close the judges throwing the decisions so that they could have rematches. It's 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 just like Disney, you know, Disney on ice. It's like the the NHL today. It it doesn't it doesn't make sense anymore. So so Tucker Carlson lives. Uh, he company loses half a billion right off the bat market value, right by just by dropping in shares. But the, what else they losing is the uh, subscribers. A lot of people probably did tune into the show or, or bought subscriptions. I don't know why would. Anybody buy subscribers, uh, you can watch it for free on YouTube. Uh, but they left. And again, who are you going to replace them with? It's going to take time. That's the thing. That's the, you know, you have, at least we know this enemy. Be careful for the, the enemy that you don't know. One thing about uh, Mr. Tucker Carlson is he could probably become, if he has so many millions of viewers, he could probably become an instant podcaster success like joe rogan he make a fortune oh he whatever his goal whatever platform he's going to be all right uh, some people saying the the regrettable thing about what happened with tucker carlson and again we got to move on from the story there's other stories to cover but i think the regrettable thing is like it's like our show we're not here really sitting here for the people that already made the lip and ate the red pill many years ago and they know what's going on. We're here on the offense to show people uh, the things that maybe somebody sitting on the fence is like something's not right. Well, we're presenting you with different sides of the story here for you to discern and engage your own critical thinking. And I think Tucker Carlson had that integral part in this kind of equation where he was very important to those people because... Uh, Face it, the cable networks, I don't know who watches cable networks except people that still buy into propaganda, right? So by people, by watching his show, he was red-pilling them every night. So, and he would encourage them to go and do their own research online and all that stuff. Thus, uh, not only dismantling all of the networks, but also waking people up, not walking, but waking people up. And a lot of people became awake to many different things, including Bud Light. Look, it, how crazy you got to be. I mean, it's, 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 it, I, I know we beat that story to death, but Bud Light bicot slashes. Go ahead, Glenn. Well, when you go woke, you go broke, and it's definitely, and they're just proving it. Look at Bud Light. Their, their, their sales went down by a staggering 17% because of this one commercial. I mean, what were they thinking of? And that's what they're saying, 17%. And their sales were already going down. So they were just throwing a Hail Mary with this commercial. Look more of an infomercial on what not to do, by the way. But that's that's just another one of the woke companies like like Disney, for example. You know, they had a massive round of layoffs. A lot of people just won't go there because it's gone too left. 
And now they're they're having another round of layoffs. 4,000 employees got laid off uh, just on Friday. Now, these are people with families and everything too, right? And there's going to be a total of 7,000 layoffs in this second round. So that's that's very tough for people. That's what happens when you go too extreme to one side. Well, and it's also a shame because they did buy Fox, which had a lot of good uh, entertainment. Well... I don't know if they did or didn't, but they definitely had some shows that I watched. Uh, I would love to watch Star Wars before all this other stuff. They had like a Mandalorian spin-off and all this other stuff. I, I would actually would love even to be in those shows, but apparently they went a little bit woke. <laughs> so people are just are losing interest in the, the Disney losing subscriptions and nobody wants to go see Disney. There's a lot of pedophile stories coming from Disney. Like somebody... Something like once a month, some pedophile gets arrested, and and this, you hear about a lot about those stories too. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, uh, you know, you have a theme park where everybody's bringing children. And there's so much going on. You're gonna have some crazy eyes around there, you know, getting excited. Okay, so, so speaking of children, Glenn, this is interesting. Uh, how do you feel about? I mean, we covered the Fahrenheit for uh, four fifty one in the last episode. And that was the book about, and the movie, uh, movies about, uh, you know, modern day utopia where books were outlawed because, you know, they were evil and the fireman's job was to burn the books. And uh, there's something going on now too. We, we actually covered it a little bit in one of the previous podcasts about books that being sold in uh, books kit section in San Francisco airport. Um, had LGBTQ written all over it, and uh, but it was not so much about LGBTQ, but it was about sexualizing children, right? Uh, so uh, Breitbart's uh, news, Joel Polak, shaping curriculum, says shaping curriculum is not banning books. Basically, there's a lot of outrage across the uh, United States, at least, by parents and uh, actually, and uh, thank God, our government that. Uh, apparently, that um, the book, uh, the books that uh, were pre available to the children in some libraries in some states, are basically were describing sexual acts, and any child could had access to that. Now, uh, you know, the one side screams, "Well, that's like book burning if you remove those books from the library." The other says, "You crazy? <laughs> you sexualizing my children at what age? <laughs> Who gave you that right?" The uh, the most banned books in America in 2022 were number one, gender queer, and number two was bluest eye. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Th that, should that be in uh, children's libraries, these crazy things? Is the bluest eye is the LGBTQ book as well? I I don't know. You Jan. don't have it in your library? <laughs> no, not in the G-Man's <laughs> library, and uh, I can tell you it won't be there. I, I remember they were banning books like Tom Sora because it had an N-word in it, remember? And uh, now, now the interesting part about any kind of banning and outlaws, well, first of all, what do you think about RFK, Robert F. Kennedy? Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the, the nephew of John F. Kennedy, he's going to be running against Biden because Biden just announced that he's going for the presidency again. Mm -hmm. I mean... I can't believe this is the the president of the most powerful country the world ever saw. You know what I mean? Like, it has so much influence in the world. And the man sometimes has a hard time just getting off the stage. Or he goes to shake some hands of somebody who's not even there. It's, it's I mean, this is a, a just, it's like a bad movie keep playing. And it's a, a, a cruel joke, by the way. But Robert F. Kennedy Jr., He's like a Democrat like his uncle used to be, okay? Uh, his, uh, not his uncle, but his, uh, like John F. Kennedy. Yeah, whatever, whatever his whatever relationship. Okay, and that, like even today, a lot of people on the right would have voted for that type of party today because um, they... The, the the new Democrat has gone way left. It's crazy. And the people who used to vote Democrat 
a lot of them just don't even show up to vote anymore because they say, well, I, I can't vote the right, but I just I can't vote for the left either. So it leaves them uh, without a vote. Is he splitting a vote, though, by running as a Democrat? Well, one thing I, I did notice about uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. was that during the lockdowns, the whole uh, the pandemic, he was against that. He was against the government overreach. He's more of a, I believe it or not, a democratic, but a libertarian. He believes in, in putting more power back to the people. So he's center left. Uh, so he did say in the interview with the Pollock, again, from the same, uh, from the previous article, uh, there is no time in history where the people who were censoring speech were the good guys. And it's true. Uh, and, uh, you know he has a lo lawsuit against Amazon specifically um, uh, about censoring one of his books and he mentioned that in the lawsuit involving Amazon for censoring one of my books they were censoring people who criticized the lockdowns while the Amazon ranking in the money from the lockdowns right so the king, people like Amazon actually made tons of money and uh, that's why um, well even like uh, it was, again, I guess part of the Amazon's policy to continue, like, why would they destroy their own business? That would make sense, right? It's just like, why would CBC and uh, show would, even if, let's say, uh, it had nothing to do with public funding, <laughs> right? They would still get a lot of money for advertising the vaccines and masks and social distancing and other propaganda. They will gain, you know, like advertising spots every 30 seconds, which is a lot, a lot of money. Why would they shoot themselves in the foot with all that revenue? Taxpayers' dollars. That's where your tax is going to. Going to the indoctrination machines. Exactly. And uh, so th there's something to be said for RFK. And that, but I don't even know that whole Democrat-Republican thing. It's still splitting the votes left and right. Like, it doesn't... It doesn't work anymore. It obviously doesn't work in Israel <laughs> with all those different political parties that they have, you know, and they have to have coalitions. And uh, I, I don't know. Is there, is there a different governing system that we can adhere anywhere? Like, or a democratic republic is still the way to go. Constitutional republic is the way to go. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be nice that in the, within the next six, eight months that you had... Uh, re some certain Republicans and Democrats come together to formulate a new party, a new party by the people, for the people, to go back to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and to do what is right for the people. Wouldn't that be something? And Tucker Carlson will run it. <laughs> Well, speaking of, uh, you know, corruption on democratic end, uh, well, it's, I, I think corruption is on all ends. It's just once you get to that certain level of power. But we, we spoke about these uh, Chinese police stations, and now there's a video allegedly shows a legal Chinese police station chief uh, mingling with uh, uh, Eric Adams, who is the... Uh, uh, He's the mayor of New York. York and, Schum and Chuck Schumer, right? Um of course, he's wearing, in the article, he's wearing a uh, mask. That's for disguise. It's for disguise. It's not for any other reason. Uh, but there's a video, apparently, allegedly, of them mingling with... So do they, uh, they get it from directly from Justin's book, right? <laughs> here, they just do it more openly. Over there, they don't get caught as much. But here, I don't, because Canadians can't be bothered to learn what's going on as much in their own country. So they, they, they just do it. And, and even when Justin does get caught, some, some scam or something that he's done, you know, at the time, a couple of weeks later, and it's all forgotten about. So that's the reason why he's been involved in so many of these things. And uh, he just, he's like the Teflon Don. He keeps sliding from one problem to another. And people just throw it out. You know, I, they don't remember anymore. They can't be bothered to, to, to remember or hold them accountable. Well, but the truth always comes, always comes out, right? The, the truth will be set free by hook or by crook. So the... 
uh, uh, Saudi Arabia invested in a firm that owes Democrat Party's campaign t- uh, campaign tax. Um, that's, I guess, I don't know. Saudi Arabia has always been the friend till we found out that we use. By the way, speaking of 9/11, Saudi Arabia officially is held responsible, and there was a lawsuit against the Saudis uh, for their official involvement with actual 9/11. But somehow they are still friends, and uh, Democrats uh, let them invest into our uh, into United States uh, el- election apparatus. <laughs> so uh, I don't know a lot of a lot of uh, things that are happening. They don't make sense. A lot of co- contradictory statements there. Um, one thing is we know for a fact is the truth is that. In at least, I don't know what your spiritual practice is, Glenn. I don't know what my spiritual practices actually do. <laughs> it's, it's a joke. But we refer to you as brothers and sisters for a reason because we believe, I believe that you're all my brothers and sisters because we come from the Heavenly Father. And uh, without going into a, you know a religious or spiritual discussion, and a lot of people come to this conclusion, even a lot of successful people that... Uh, uh, material things don't really uh, make you happy. But, you know, I'm not talking bad about money, by the way. We need money, Glenn. How, how do you say this? What's your statement? Well, it, it, it's not the most important thing in the world. It just ranks up there with oxygen, food, and water, and love. Yeah, because you cannot uh, oftentimes, and nowadays you probably would have to buy oxygen because you ran out of your carbon taxes. <laughs> I mean, uh, carbon credits. <laughs> Uh, so there's a boxing legend, and you guys all know George Foreman, right? And uh, he actually became an ev- evangelical uh, uh, preacher, I believe. And to him, he said, "This is the greatest thing because there's a there's a documentary coming about uh, coming around uh, very soon, and uh, evangelistic is the world is the word that has been so powerful to me in my life." He says, "If something happened." To me tomorrow, I know I've done a good job, and I am happy about that. Trying to spell out the world, Jesus Christ has come alive in me. So, what he means by that, like this is one thing that unites us all. Whatever you achieve here, materially, physically, you cannot take it with you to the grave. I mean, Egyptians tried. <laughs> Egyptians tried. Money is a good thing, big guy. You can do a lot of good things with money. Obviously, Mr. George Foreman here the ex-heavyweight champion of the world several times, he uh, is faith-based. And he's done very well in, in, in the game of life when it comes to wealth. And I'm sure he's going to uh, do some good things with this wealth. He probably he already has, actually. Yeah, he made more money with the Foreman Grill than anything else. And uh, the, well, there's another Christian story. That well, we, <laughs> you know, the Lord talks to us in different ways, apparently. I, I, I don't know. It must be more than one God for some people. <laughs> but uh, here you have a, she's a Christian teacher. She claims that God told her to become a porn star. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what God she was listening well, to. She had heard but the spirit. It told her, I kept hearing and feeling the nudge to help liberate women from the sexual shame. Well, uh, sort of. Actually, that's that's definitely not God because, <laughs> okay, this is uh, some scriptural thing. Uh, Adam and Eve did not feel shame. They were naked in the Garden of Eden till they tasted the fruit. And who convinced them to taste the fruit? The snake. Yeah, the devil. So that's the first time they recognized the nakedness. That's the first time they felt shame. Before that, they didn't even feel any difference. And then that's the first time they will co- they cover themselves afterwards. So uh, it wasn't definitely uh, God's spirit <laughs> whispering in her ear. It was somebody else. Uh, interesting, though. Interesting. Uh, you know, porn is just another addiction. And there are people who are profiting off of these addictions, whether it be drugs, alcohol, gambling, sex industry. I mean, you know, but I... I Okay, I blame them for capitalizing on it, but you have to put the responsibility back on the people. Nobody put a gun to your head and says, "Here, you have to give me money to watch me do this 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 porn show." You know? So, at least we have free will. Now, what you do with your free will, that is going to dictate your quality of life. It seems like a lot of people will 
just get rid of all their integrity and their self-esteem just for the sole purpose of having more money. That's a, 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 a way to hell, actually. That's hell on earth. You, you're never going to be a happy person. You may th- show everybody else, oh, look at all these nice things I have, and you make these people envious because they're controlled by their egos. But in actuality, when the lights are down and these people are by themselves, they don't have a very high look, a high standard for themselves. And they suffer inside because of this. Yeah, it comes from a lot of insecurity internally. I agree with you. And then it's projected outwards, usually in form of aggression towards others too. Um, Just watch the view. (laughs) That's one hell of a point of view. Let's go here. Um, Okay. The show has been already going for too long, but we we cannot close the show without a favorite subject, which is the war. No, I'm kidding. War is not a favorite subject. Um, but again, obviously, no new cycle is complete without update on Ukraine. And Ukraine apparently have been planning an attack on Moscow. And again, how much of the information that's come coming out of that is disinformation or some kind of fear mongering again about triggering World War Three, nuclear war, and so that. You continue to be, be very, very scared, but there are articles out there that uh, Zelensky was planning uh, something to attack to Moscow with drones and uh, and other th- other means, and uh, and that uh, Americans said, no, 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 don't do that. It's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, the the leaks are exposing things, you know, like I, I, you can't put give a, a lot of credibility to these so-called leaks. It could be just. Uh, purposely done you know controlled but then it can also be used right because uh, now we do have articles saying that uh there were multiple drones found near moscow and uh, a large unmanned aircraft crashed near the russian capital on monday reportedly not far from one of the three or uh, other uavs that have been found now you and me cannot apparently one of them had 17 kg of c4 explosives which is a lot of explosives can cause a lot of damage with that uh and i believe there's some pictures of no they don't uh but definitely this information could be used as disinformation to keep people scared or uh even like uh give uh the russian uh side an opportunity to capitalize on that and say, like, see, we told you they're going to attack uh, civilians. We've got to go and do more. <laughs> Champ, you know, we're reading about drones may have got close to Moscow. Listen, people, anytime Russia wants, they could fly right in and take out Kiev like nothing. Okay? So that's, th- this is a, a giant smokescreen where our brothers and sisters are being killed ruthlessly. Like we always say, the rich globalists start the wars, poor young people fight them, and the poor and middle class, they're the ones who suffer the most. Okay? Now, in, in Canada here, uh, Russia has warned uh, their citizens not to travel to Canada. Okay? Because it could be dangerous for Russian citizens in Canada. Well, I don't know. We're here on the grass, on, on the grounds here in Canada all the time. We talk to people. They, they have no thought about that whatsoever. So I don't know where this is coming from. And then Canada is blaming the increase in airline fees to the, the fact that there's a no-fly zone over Russia right now. No kidding. If you were Russia, would 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 you be comfortable with all kinds of planes flying over your country right now? Well, originally there was tat for tat, right? So the that's a reciprocal decision because uh, originally when all those sanctions started, I remember that because that that's one of the reasons why I couldn't fly out from Moscow last year is, um, and I'm going to make a video about that, by the way. I've documented this whole trip, my my journey from Moscow to back to Canada. But there, there was a... Um, the first thing they did is they closed the airspace for all the Russian airlines flying out of Moscow anywhere in the world. And uh, Canada was one of them. So Russia said, okay, so we'll close our space, you know, it's in tet for tet decision. And they did. And uh, and everybody's like, oh, wow, now let's say flight from London 
to like Hong Kong, for example, is now like five hours longer <laughs> because they have to go, they got to fly south instead of straight across. They cannot fly to India. They cannot fly to any of those countries. They have to fly under, which is burns a lot more fuel and adds a lot more time to travel. Yeah, in Canada also you have the flight attendants. They're protesting in uh, four or five different big airports in Canada right now because uh, for un unpaid hours that they work. So, like, that's the reality. They just are fighting for their share to get paid to try and keep up to the cost of living that these globalists are, are, are uh, creating inflation by just printing money. But somebody's getting paid. Uh, and that somebody is the military industrial complex, defense spending in Europe back to the Cold War levels. Uh, and UK was 2022's biggest spender in the region at 68.5 billion, according to Stockholm International Peace uh, Research Institute. The whole world together had spent 2.24 trillion in US dollars, if you were to value everything in US dollars. On, on on military hardware and warmongering last year in 2022. $2.24 trillion. You know, do, do you think that we could use that money for the betterment of our planet, for the betterment, betterment of the people oh, living no, you, on the planet right yeah, now? Yeah, you can. You, you can use your credit card. You know, but, <laughs> and, and, and in Canada here, women's shelters, they're losing $150 million federal funding because they don't have enough money for that. But don't they have credit cards? Didn't Justin said that's a good economic decision <laughs> to, to, to use your credit card? Well, he's using Canada's credit card to send money all around the world and, 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 and give it to big corporations for corporate welfare like Volkswagen to be staying in, in, in Ontario. You know, so, like, they have money for this but they don't have money for real problems that Canadians are going through. Well, and there's more, like, uh, what fuels that machine is more of the propaganda, and that's why, like, people, Tucker Carlson, they were not uh, a, a good asset uh, to the propaganda machine because he was like, well, well, why are we sending all this to Ukraine? You know, and he listed many reasons that we list here on this show. And now you would have uh, Kirby, uh, you know, warning uh, that Russian offensive is in Ukraine. Well, let's be scared. What does it mean? Let's send them more money. Let's print more money so we can send more money to Ukraine uh, to kill more of the brothers and sisters. Yeah, let's do that. That's that's a good point. Champ, I just wanted to say that um, there's a, a South African president that's visiting Canada. Visited yesterday. I, I don't know if he's still here today. And he was surprised at the warmongering that Canada is involved with in Ukraine. You know, after the Second World War, our military was the most respected military in the world. Our soldiers were very highly trained, highly disciplined. That's why we were given by the United Nations Security Council we, we were given the job of, of going in to countries to maintain security. For the United Nations. And, you know, we were very neutral, but we did the job very, very well. And today, our military is, is a fraction of what it used to be. And because of the people running the, the, the government right now, they're using this military for um, aggressive purposes. They're not defense. They're using them for offense. That's wrong. Well, in light of this, Russia urges expansion of UN Security Council. That would be a good thing because you'd have more countries all around the world involved. They, they, they have the main five countries, which is um, France, England, Canada, uh, sorry, uh, America, uh, Russia, and China. And then every two years, they vote for another 10 countries to be in in the United Nations Security Council. But you should have as many nations as possible. That way you'd get a, a clearer picture of what's going on because there's a lot of, uh, of those other 10 nations, they fall under, let's say, American control or Anglo-American empire control, like Canada would be like that. What is UN going to do in Sudan? What's happening in Sudan? Well, that's, uh, it seems, from, from what's coming out of there, it seems to be Sudan is uh, like in... Uh, 
the lower middle part of Africa and just off of uh, the island of Madagascar. And they s seem to be having a civil war, like a military war between two generals to fight for the control of the country. So it could be um, the, the, the old paradigm fighting against the new paradigm, the, the paradigm of change for control of that country. Uh, but interesting story coming out, war and biolabs. We just saw one in Ukraine and now we have one here in Sudan where the World Health Organization, the WHO, warned of potentially a biological hazard in Sudan on Tuesday, describing an armed faction's seizure of a laboratory holding samples of pathogens, including polio and missiles, and uh, extremely dangerous situation. <laughs> What's with these labs? And why do they have? Why they all have the same viruses? <laughs> yeah. Why? Why are they like? What are you keeping these viruses for? Like you know, there's there's little accidents that happen all the time. Whether it's a real accident or it's it's portrayed as an accident, it happens all the time. We just saw it with the uh, the pandemic. It it came out of a Wuhan lab in in China, or let's blame it on China. Well, how did it get there in the first place? And well, you know, it would have. And what to were they doing with it? You yeah, know, gain of function. <laughs> we we would have to have a sit down here with Mr. Bill Gates, and we'd get a better idea right from the horse's mouth. Yeah, he's coming tomorrow. That's or, our special guest. Or the horse's arse, whatever you want to look at it. Oh, uh, and obviously the Western sanctions didn't really work, right, Glenn? This is uh, they fired back like uh, Western sanctions. They were using the the petrodollar, the world reserve currency, as a weapon against other countries that don't want to toe their line. So the other countries looked at it and said, "Ooh, we better start moving away from that system of trade, the SWIFT system of uh, transaction, financial transactions." So that backfired now against the Anglo-American empire. One thing, though, we, we talk about this. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theorist mentality, but uh, that could be all planned purposely, you know, because... Control demolition, building yeah, seven. Yeah, well, at a, at a much, much bigger level, believe it or not. Like, this monetary system, it's been in existence since uh, 1971. The world reserve currency is a debt-based monetary system. Now there's too much debt in the system. So no matter what they do, the debt is weighing too much. And they, they, they raise the interest rates to try and slow down the inflation. And then you see the bankruptcy starting. You know, big big corporations laying off. The, the unemployment's going to start going up. Banks themselves are getting hit. Uh, you're going to start, uh, everybody's going to start hearing about uh, a first uh, republic again in America. Okay. And uh, Moody's, which is a, a rating uh, company, came out and just uh, rated downward, severely downward, 10 big banks in America. So that banking crisis is going to uh, create a contagion. We said it before, it's not over yet. And inflation is real because... Uh well, specifically, uh, de-dollarization, right, of the world economy. Uh, United States dollar, the American dollar, was used in 55% of all the world transactions. All the world transactions. Now it's 43%. It went down 12%. So it's definitely losing its value. So there's definitely less need for American dollar now. So that's one of the things that drives the inflation. And that's no longer like a boogeyman. It's not a Chinese conspiracy. It's not Alex Sashow conspiracy. It's a real thing. And it's happening in forms of those banks being degraded and failing even in United States and um, Europe. What is the next bank to go in Canada, Glenn? Uh, well, Toronto Dominion, believe it or not, is the most shorted bank in the world. Another, uh, I was looking at a chart of, of banks in, in North America and one of them was the CIBC. Wow. Their debt to equity ratio is, is too high. So that might be a, a, a problem. When the contagion starts, especially in Canada here, when you look at the overpriced uh, real estate market, especially commercial now with, with a lot of people working from home and you got all these big, uh, 
big high rise buildings where they're going to be 20, 30 percent empty. Well, the banks are going to be taking these non uh, these non performing assets back in their balance sheet, and they're going to be people are going to be pulling their money out, so the banks lose liquidity, and they'll be facing uh, bankruptcy. So there's a good way to finish the show with this one conspiracy theory. <laughs> Uh, all those things like, you know, the electronic IDs and CBDC, which is the digital currency, right, that are going to be implemented. We don't, I don't, I hope it's not, but that's, that seems to be the tendency. We do have the story that uh, uh, a Russian a central bank governor says that uh, Russia is ready to give businesses the opportunity to settle foreign trade, uh, to settle foreign trade in Bitcoin and crypto. So maybe all those war efforts and sanctions improvised, like uh, Glenn says, maybe it is all by design. Maybe Putin is a bad cop and, you know, the West is a good cop or vice versa. Uh, Putin is a good cop against the bad cop, the West. And uh, uh, we, the people, are the ones that are suffering. And now we're going to have to use things like, uh, you know, digital currencies where we're going to be tracked 24-7, uh, what we use it for and how. There's no way to do it under the table because... Glenn, why? Well, you were talking about good cop, bad cop. In Russia, they think Putin is the good cop, right? Yes. And that America, or uh, Zelensky, is the bad cop. Mm -hmm. And all these central bank digital currencies, that's just a form of the central banks being able to control people even more. One thing, though, if you were to back a digital currency, like any currency, if it's not backed by anything, then it's just fiat. It's a floating currency depending on uh, the people's faith in it. But in Zimbabwe, the old uh, Rhodesia in Africa, they uh, are, are, uh, are the first now to back their central bank digital currency with gold. So there's hope, brothers and sisters. There's hope. Pray. Stay disciplined, read the Bible, and use your discernment. And we'll see you on the next one.